the, the transition from custom-made applications, as we were used to, to the ERP uh, platform as well. Live from New York, it's The Q. Covering Inforum 2016, brought to you by Infor. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. We're back to wrap, everybody. This is day one, end of day one coverage. George and I are going to break down what we heard today. So this is the second uh, Inforum that we've done. It seems to be that Infor is on a cadence of every two years. Last Inforum was in uh, New Orleans, New Orleans, and it was a you know, great event. Good, good sort of launching pad, and now New York City, much larger crowd. I think I said 14,000 before I heard 8,000. I don't know, that's big. A lot of people here. Um, we're seeing the evolution of Infor, a company that's been around for a long time, um, was kind of frankly struggling you know, a decade ago, trying to figure out where to go. Charles Phillips came in, he brought in a new team. Uh, they'd done a roll-up of, of Lawson Software, McCormick and Dodge, uh, I think Infinium's in there somewhere, a num number of others. Uh, and then started to invest with uh, some backing from Golden Gate Capital. Normally you see private equity companies, George, we were talking about this before, you know, suck money out of the company, take the cash flow out of the company, bleed it dry, that's not what's happening here. They're positioning it for an IPO, I suppose, although well, that's not, not getting a lot of play, not a lot of talk, there doesn't seem to be a big rush to do that. There seems to be more of a rush to transform the company, become relevant, compete in various segments, like retail, like manufacturing, you know, uh, micro segmentation uh, of industries. We've heard a number of sort of the wheel of industries and the micro industries that these guys focus on, going what they what Infor calls the last mile of of customization out of the box, so that you don't have to as a customer, you know, bring those modifications in. And it's you know we're talking about a three billion dollar company growing at a solid ten percent a year, nine ten percent but with license and cloud revenues that are growing substantially faster in the mid-20s, uh, throwing off cash, investing that cash in the business, um, making acquisitions, really going forward, particularly in, in retail, but other industries as well. Um, yeah, strong story, George. What's your take? Um, sort of just as positive as what you were saying. Coming from another angle though, um, the software or technical angle, where you know, what they were doing, as you said, financially is uh, um, unconventional, but sort of very, very compelling. What they're doing from a uh, software architecture point of view is also unconventional and very, very compelling, which is um, traditionally when you buy a bunch of different software companies, it's very hard to stitch them together because they've been built in entirely different ways. It's like trying to knit together a bunch of different skyscrapers that you've bought. They're just architected differently. So what these, what Infor has done is reconceived the applications around sort of a, what they call a, like a bullseye chart, where the inner core is the hardest part to change. And as you move away from that core, it to the edge, those are the parts that are easier to change. And so, whereas SAP and Oracle re-architected their applications, sort of forklift, big bang, you know, inside out, all at once, and in fact, you know, it took, it took Oracle like 10 years, and SAP restarted a couple Infusion times. Apps, yeah. Yeah, right. and SAP is essentially just starting over it in the past year or so. Um, so, um, Infor is making um, incremental progress, starting with the user interface, starting with um, the next level in, like CRM, then starting with, um, say, ERP, and then the industry-specific engines in the back. And so, because these are all now deployable to the cloud, you can integrate each of these pieces. When they were all on customer premises, um, you had to support every version and every customization that every customer made. It was a mess, that was spaghetti code. Now when you do this incremental integration and you leave out, uh, for the end, the core hard to change engines, you make much faster progress. So even if you have less skilled developers than an SAP or Oracle who are high-end system houses, you can get there faster. Um, so uh, 
I, I think what they've done is something that we haven't seen in the application space. Yeah, and, and as well, you know, all, all cloud, run on AWS, not trying to be you know, the end-to-end the -end solution provider in terms of owning the data center infrastructure. There's a lot of money to be made doing that, but Infor said, we don't want to do that, we want to focus. Uh, and then the other thing, I'd love to see in the, the, the ecosystem, I think, you know, it's, 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 it's young and immature, it needs to you know, blossom, but they're putting effort into that. I'd love to see them take this mongoose platform and open it up a little bit, but you know, our understanding is, I guess there's a reticence to do that, that it might you know, weaken the story. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand why. I need to think that through I a little bit. I think we need to hear more it, about it it. it. it seems to me that that would be a huge advantage and a lever and a multiplier, you know, force multiplier for the, or, the organization. So I'd like to see I'd like to learn more about that, because I think that you're seeing so many great examples, well, at least some in the, in the industry anyway. I think you know, ServiceNow is, a, is an excellent example of a company that's got a platform that's very flexible, that can allow people to innovate and build on top of, and this is a company, ServiceNow, that talks about, all their customers talk about, no modifications, no modifications, because coming out of the cloud, you really you know, can't have a SaaS product with tons of mods. So, um, Interesting day one, uh, we heard about Infor IoT, which was kind of, kind of new. Still a little bit unclear on, on exactly the what, details. what that is and the details there. A um, lot of talk about digital transformation. You know, we're going to talk uh, to Duncan and Gov tomorrow about that. Uh, big day tomorrow, Charles Phillips is coming on. Uh, all the execs, uh, Stefan Scholl, who's the president and really runs the go to market, uh, he's going to come on. We got Customers coming on as well. Final thoughts, George? I think the last, the last guest we had had some of the most profoundly interesting things we heard. This is the company, Predictix, that they bought to be the core of their new re retail solution. And what he said has huge implications, and not just for Infor, but for SAP and Oracle, which is customers can buy and implement the analytic solutions, the predictive analytic solutions first without upgrading their transaction systems. And that means just the way Amazon changed the entire economics of startups, now companies can change the economics of their IT investments. They don't have to replace with a new generation their existing operational applications. They just bolt the analytics on and then um, it works fine whether you're using an old operational system or a new one. Um, and one other thing, we've talked a lot um, as, a, as a consultancy, as a research firm about all the intelligence going to the edge on yeah, IoT. Sure. But or much of it. Yeah. yeah, much of it. But what came out is that you are going to have a huge amount in the center because you look at data from all these different angles, and that's why when we heard from Predictix that they're being designed to run on 10,000 cores, you know, for an hour or two hours or 10 hours, is something that gives them a huge advantage where a hybrid competitor who has to design for running on a 10 core machine or a 100 core machine can't match. So that, in other words, the Predictix application can look at instead of just uh, data points across a, a chronology, they can look at it at you know, X, Y, Z, 10 different ways. And um, again, so major change in the economics and then this platform, writing it for the cloud makes it, uh, enables it to do things functionally that you can't do on-prem. Well, too, I think differentiation is, is key, right? Because they're up against the likes of SAP and Oracle, who as I said before, they'll, they'll basically co-opt all your messaging, steal that, and then you know, look at look what you know Oracle's trying to do with 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 Workday. You certainly see others doing it. Oracle in the cloud, SAP, you know, similarly. Um, and and so, smaller companies like Infor, they have to differentiate. They have to t tell a different story. Um, and and so, for instance, we heard from one of our guests uh, talking about their human capital management story and some of the differences there. Um, you're certainly hearing about this, you know, micro vertical industry, you know, differentiation, this notion of, 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 of running everything in the cloud. So those are all good points. I think they got to do this, this event more than every other year, right? Because the key part of what Infor has to do is keep getting the word out. And this is a great way to get it out. So having a two year cadence on your big customer event, I, I think is, 
missing a, a marketing opportunity. I mean, it's too good of an event. They should just keep growing it, put the pedal to the metal, and and go. So I'd like to see that. But but generally, strong messaging out of day one. Um, you know, we're going to hear more tomorrow, more announcements. Uh, George and I will be back. Uh, check out crowdchat.net slash inform16. Uh, go to siliconangle.com for all the, the, all the news, siliconangle.tv. We'll have all the videos today chopped up. Check out at the cube for uh, all the stuff, the cube gems, the, the tweets. Okay, this is the cube. We're signing off uh, day one from Inform 2016. We'll see you tomorrow.